rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We rejoice in you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, worship team. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you being here tonight. Praise God. God is good. Amen. We'll let these guys get off the platform here. Praise the Lord. Any prayer requests tonight? Praise the Lord. Mike. More the presence of the Lord. Amen. Peter? Um, just need direction. Got to make some decisions. I just need to know the next step. All right. Praise the Lord. I got a text message. I didn't get a chance to respond to it yet. I just got it when I got here to church for a... I won't say who it is, but... Uh, their daughter uh, feels like she's, I don't want to say possessed, but being manipulated and controlled by the enemy and uh, having some really emotional problems as a result of that. And uh, so I'd like, to, God knows who it is, and I, I'd just like us to have prayer for her that she can have, be in her right mind and, and, and recognize the presence of the Lord. I'm going to have to meet with them at, when it's a, possible for them and me to get together but in the meantime uh, you know a lot of times because I don't know the I know the the young woman's mother but I don't know her so I don't know where she stands in her relationship with the Lord and in terms of her faith and if she has accepted Jesus as her Savior and so forth but um, a lot of times you know the enemy comes against our mind and tries to manipulate and twist and distort and Bring fear. And wherever there's fear, you know it's not God. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but it's peace, and love, joy, sound mind. So, uh, amen for this uh, young woman. We want God to intervene there and just rebuke the lies of the devil. Amen. For to, to know that God is greater. He that's in her, or available to her at least, is greater than he that's in the world. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Tim. I just, I don't never take that way because when you got thousands of people walking around right. on buses, and so we got to be two different schools in the same day. And uh, I just always praise the Lord when we get in and out. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, we do the night drive with students. And, and that same way, I mean, we just, you know, have four trucks, one of the bigger ones we've had in a little while. But, you know, we always want to get there safely and get back home. Sure. And then I ask you to remember my, my daughter out in Oregon, and uh, just things that she's dealing with, and, and uh, being that far away, you don't get to see them. And, right. You know, you just want God to work in your life. And, and the last prayer request, just remember the boy's uh, mom. Uh, well, we prayed for her before uh, for some things in her life. And then my one son, he has the opportunity to get a house and uh, to buy a house. So we just ask God to move in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Show the picture today. Is, Families expanding, and, he, and they were in a trailer, and now they want to get uh, move into a house. Amen. Ask yes. God to just open that door. Yes, amen. amen. So we appreciate your prayers. Praise yes, the, Lord. the Lord. Anyone else? James. Paul, Jeremy, and Chris. Different 
Amen. God knows the need, and He can certainly take care of it. You just keep your confidence in Him. Amen. Anybody else? All right, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for the, the requests that have been made to you, Lord. And we just throw and cast all of our care upon you for every one of these situations and circumstances. And every one of them, Lord, we know it's your will to meet that need, to answer that prayer. And so, Lord, we just bind together right now in agreement with you that all of these things will come to pass, even as we have prayed, even as we have requested, Lord, that these prayer requests turn into great testimonies for your faithfulness and to your goodness and kindness to your people. Lord, bless them, each and every one. Answer the most desperate need that they have, Lord. Uh, for when the enemy comes in like a flood, you lift up a standard, Lord. And we just rebuke the lies and the attack of the enemy in every one of these situations in every area. And we declare the goodness of God, the favor of God on each and every one of these people, Lord. That they will see your hand mighty in love and power on their behalf. Lord, show them the steps to take. Give them the wisdom and the understanding that only the Holy Spirit can give to, to take the right decisions, make the right decisions, take the right course, Lord, that they might take a step of faith and that you would, Lord, light their path and show them, amen, your goodness and your mercy. And for that, Lord, we are going to give you all the praise, all the worship, all the glory for you alone are worthy and deserving of it all. In Jesus' name, praise God. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. If you have a phone, please turn it to vibrate or off. Uh, Friday, this coming Friday, Mike. Yep. This coming Friday, East Gate House of Prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be there or be square, right? Come on, be, a, be part of it. Come and take part, participate. Uh, it's having an impact. I tell you, every, every week when we talk about this or every month when we talk about it, it does have an impact. I can tell the difference the following day or the day after when I'm preaching. It, it has an impact on the spiritual forces that are trying to impede, amen, what God has given us to do, amen. And so uh, come be part of it. If you can come for 10 minutes, fine. If you can come for the whole two hours or however long they end up staying, Amen. That's all good. Just be, just come and participate and be part of what God's doing. Yes. Amen. Show our unity and uh, our agreement. Amen. And and uh, and overcoming the enemy. Praise the Lord. Yes. So come be part of that. Fall cleanup, uh, October 21st. Uh, we're going to do some uh, inside and outside. We've got several things that need to be done. Just general cleanup of, for one thing, because you know, just like your house over time, stuff you know. Hit the highlights. We've got to look under the rugs where we've been sweeping stuff here for a while. All that. But amen. Come help us out. And uh, it's your church after all. You might as well take some uh, ownership. Praise the Lord. Okay. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Uh, if you can't make it at 9, just come when you can. We'll be here for several hours, I'm sure. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Thanks. 9 a.m. Why didn't I see that? I, I just put it there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm hallucinating. Praise the Lord. All right. Anything else? Anybody else have anything? Praise the Lord. Well, Ron, you are our designated offer taker upper. Praise the Lord. And so if you would, come and receive the offering for us tonight. And if you don't mind, would you just pray over that as well? <clears throat> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is a time, a special time, to be alive in the well yes. and in the body of Christ. Thank yes. You. Yes. The mighty work that you're going to do in our midst, what you are already doing, Lord, just feed us tonight. Your word. So give us wisdom and understanding the sermon. Value it, receive it, and put it away deep within us. We will have it to use for every situation we mm. encounter. Father, we just ask you to bless this all day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Ron. And God bless you as you give.
Well, it is Wednesday night, and Wednesday nights we try to be brief, or be obedient to the Lord, but uh, be conscious of your <coughs> work schedules and everything as well. So try to keep it, uh, keep focused, and just uh, say what the Lord wanted me to say, and then y'all can go home and have pizza or whatever you do after you get out of here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We have a tendency to eat really late on, uh, <clears throat> on Wednesday nights. I hate eating before I preach. And uh, <clears throat> so I never do. But and I guess you're really not that interested in all of that because I don't know why. I'm just all about, yeah, it's all about me, you know. So come on. I don't know. James is. James is celebrating 55, and I, I know he's getting a little concerned. I remember 55 vaguely, <laughs> but uh, believe me, James, it only gets better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's it. Amen. Thriving at 55. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, uh, Mike, if you would, let's let's begin at Matthew chapter 17. I want to read Matthew 17 verses 15 through 20. Matthew 17, 15 through 20. Praise the Lord. Sure. I heard someone, uh, I don't know, last week I think it was, they were talking about, not, not in the church here, but just, uh, and they were talking about grace and how, <clears throat> oh, they always want to hear the message of grace, but, um, they're not open to uh, the correction of the Lord and, I, I, and, and a bunch of other things that I don't even want to repeat because it was so unscriptural. God didn't give us grace for us to be, you know, crazy sinners. And I think, you know, we all understand that. So that isn't, that isn't the motive here. Right. But a lot of the things that we've called sin in the past weren't sin in the first place. It was just something within the church culture or the religious culture that they kind of rejected or didn't like, and so they made it a sin. Praise the Lord. Not unlike the Jews uh, who were given the Ten Commandments and then some Levitical, some other Levitical laws, dietary laws, and so forth, but turned them into like 680 some yeah. laws. I forget now exactly what it was, but something outrageous that they just kept adding to it, thinking that. Well, you know, I see this person doing that. That, that, that isn't right. I, I don't like that, so let's do something about it. Way of controlling people and manipulating right. and actually keeping them from a, a deeper and more <clears throat> meaningful relationship with the Lord. So, so that's where I'm going uh, this evening, to some degree at least. But, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is uh, a lunatic. Anybody ever say that? Anybody ever bring that? <laughs> praise the Lord. I know my mother must have many times. Praise the Lord. Have mercy on my son. He's a lunatic. And sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought, I brought him to, the, to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Mm -hmm. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Right. Praise the Lord. So, You've you got to remember here that these disciples are not unlike many of us. Jesus is introducing the kingdom of God. And it's a, it's, a, it's a transition period from the old covenant to the new covenant. And he's trying to get them to understand how this new covenant works. But they're still locked up in this guilt trip over Judaism because these are all Jews and they're still under the law. And so they're struggling with faith because they know how messed up they are. They know that they're not perfect and they know that they fail and they struggle and that was the reason and that's why Jesus addresses this and he said that, you know it's your lack of it's your unbelief. Yeah. It's not that you don't have the ability to do it it's you just don't believe you have it. You just don't believe that you can because you're not everything that you think you should be. Amen. Alright so now let's look at Galatians chapter 3 
verses 23 through 26. Galatians 3, 23 through 26. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay, so the more that the law is preached, the more it shuts up faith. Shut the back door. You know, I mean, that's what, that's what we really are doing. We're, block, we're stopping the move of God a lot of times because of unbelief. Because where the law is, when we're, we're measuring ourselves by ourselves and among ourselves, immediately you'll find, well, I'm a little better than that, but I'm not as good as that. And so all this uh, math takes place and we end up with nothing. And so the more we talk about the law, the more we preach the law, the more it stifles or shuts up faith. So the law, when the law is preached, it contaminates faith. Yes. It mixes it. it it's yes. like leaven, right? Yep. So what religion does is preach part of the law, and this is what I was talking about earlier, that fits its culture. Yep. So we, you know, we got an issue with this particular thing or that thing. It's not sin as such. For example, let's say, and this is not a, this is not to encourage people. Just do what how you are led of the Lord. Okay, that's the, that's the first thing. Suppose you're you have a glass of wine with a meal, or it's a hot day and you're mowing and you have a beer. I don't ever do this. Praise the Lord, rarely. But I'm just saying. This is what I'm saying is that's not sin. Drunkenness is sin. If it's a habit, if it's an ongoing thing, if you can't do your job and, and take care of your family and, and, and be the person that you're supposed to, that's a problem. Yes. But Paul told Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach. We know Jesus turned wine, water into wine at the first, uh, or at that wedding ceremony, his first miracle. So it's not anti-Christ to have a drink or to have a beer. It is sin when you, when you destroy the temple of God. <coughs> And when it impacts other people, right. if somebody, if it's going to cause somebody else to stumble, hang on, just don't do it. I mean, save it for later. You know what I'm saying? Just don't. So that's that's the point I'm trying to make. So, you know, because religion within the religious culture, we we say that's just drinking is terrible. Well, drunkenness is bad because bad stuff happens as a result of it. People get stupid and do and do stupid things. But the, having a drink or whatever is not sin in itself, but it, it, uh, it goes against the culture of religion. Yeah. Okay, so that's what religion will do then, is it will begin to preach things that are not biblical, they're just cultural within that religious system. Amen? And then they try to call that the gospel. Yeah. When in reality, that's what Paul called perversion of the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's manipulating that's twisting it amen trying to get it to say something it doesn't say galatians chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 <clears throat> i marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of christ into another gospel which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of christ by trying to make it something that it's not amen so, to shut up faith is to keep people from believing that they are qualified to receive miracles, mm -hmm. to operate in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. If God's giving us something on the basis of how good we are, we're disqualified from the start. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Just forget about getting anything. Right. Amen. That's why it's called grace. Yes. It's unmerited favor. Yes. You don't earn it. You just get it free. Okay? Yes. All right. Now that's kind of the platform. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 21, verses 20 to 22. And I'm convinced I saw more miracles in my own life when I knew less. And the more I learned or thought I was learning, the less of the supernatural I experienced. Why? Because I'm more self-conscious. Yeah. than I was originally. Yes. 
Come on. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. The more conscious you are of you, the less conscious you are of Christ, and the more you impede what God's trying to do. Amen. So, when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? I'm not going back through that whole story for the sake of time, but you all know the story, right? They're on their way to Jerusalem. The fig tree doesn't have anything on it. Jesus curses it. They're coming back the next day. The fig tree's dead. It's withered away. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, remember we just talked about the mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Praise the Lord. Now, when Jesus begins to talk about faith here, He's talking about saying to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. Now I thought, I got to thinking about this because Sunday, uh, Suzanne and, and uh, Roberto, and, and uh, or not Suzanne, I'm sorry, you were somewhere else, praise the Lord. And, uh, but Roberto and Tammy were talking about, you know, the walking on the water and the sea, you know, the faith, the whole thing, you know. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, what, what is that really all about? What are we really talking about here? Because again, when you read the scripture, there is, it's, it's, it is literal in the sense that you can, you can read it as a historic events, which it is. Mm -hmm. Grammatically, you can read it, and it's correct. Mm -hmm. All that's true. But there is more to this than just what's on the surface. Now, if all you ever did was read what was on the surface, that's good. You could be saved. You, you could be born again. But you'd be limited right. in your relationship with the Lord because you'd only understand Him from that surface way. Right. So the deeper you go, the more open you are to the voice of God. This is being led by the Spirit. And yes. so how many of you have had the Lord say something to you that you just didn't make sense? Yeah. Right. That's a pretty good indication that it was the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's too big for me. You know, it's too much for me. Well, that's kind of the way reading the Bible or studying the Bible should be. And you can do that. Just, just do word studies and you'll be amazed. I mean, just stay focused on the word. Just do the word study and, let, and see where it takes you. And you'll find there is revelation in all of this. Yes. You don't have to be a theologian, you know. No. So, Jesus begins to talk about faith here. And he, he says, you know, you can say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. But here's what's interesting to me. The context of this verse is right behind or just before him cursing the fig tree. Or in this case, it's right after he curses the fig tree. Now, we talked about the mountain before because he had the same issue. He told his disciples when they couldn't cast out the demon, right? Mm -hmm. Out of the little boy, they said, you know, you could say to a mountain, it, it would go. It would do. Yeah. All right. Here he's repeating himself. But this comes right after he has seen the fig tree. Okay, right, right before he says curse the mountain, he's talking about the fig tree. Now this is using the idea of the fig tree as some, something spiritual is going on here. First of all, the Holy Ghost, nothing is in this Bible that God doesn't want us to know. Right. It's there for a reason. We may see it as being insignificant or just kind of mundane and just... But there's always there's significance to all of it if you want to take the time to look for it. Okay, so the context of this verse comes from the cursing of the fig tree or the recognition of that uh, fig tree being cursed. So the, this is using the idea of the fig tree and it goes clear back to the, to the garden. It goes clear back to Genesis. And let me show you what I mean. Because there they used the fig tree to cover their nakedness. They had sinned, right? They had wanted to be like God. They were going to be gods on earth. They were going to be their own gods instead of just being what God had created them to be, a son or a child of God. They thought they could do this independent and they get into trouble. So look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 7. And so they, they see that they're naked because they have sinned. The eyes of them were both open. They knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. How many of you ever, ever wear an apron? Yep. It's great going forward. Yeah. <laughs> if you're really sloppy like me in the kitchen, you better wear two and one of them backwards because you're going to be exposed back there, praise the Lord. 
So here's what I'm saying. I know it's hard to get that out of your head now, but maybe what Jesus is cursing here is more than some physical tree in the Mideast or in Israel. All right? Maybe what he's cursing is this whole system of man's religion, of man trying to be able to do this stuff on their own. All right? So they're trying to, man here in this particular scripture is trying to cover his nakedness with this man-made self-help program. Yeah. Right? It's a man-made covering. Yeah. It, it represents his work, his labor, his, his effort, his own abilities, right? So what Jesus is really cursing here is man's effort to try and make himself holy based on what he can put together or design mm -hmm. or the apron that he can make, mm -hmm. right? So Jesus is cursing the whole idea of religion. Wow. wow. Praise the Lord. I don't know. Uh, my, I don't think we ever had this when I was a kid because there was too many kids. But my grandpa, I remember going to my grandparents and they always had this bowl on the dining room table of wax fruit. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Did you? Yeah. 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 It looked beautiful. I mean, it was really pretty. So much so that I tried to eat it several times. I thought, one of these has got to be real, right? And uh, so you get this peach, and it's, it's wax. But it's got a little fuzz on it. It looks like it could be, you know, but it's not. And that's really what happens with religion. You come in, and you see this beautiful thing and it all looks really good but there's no substance to it that's right. That's right. you don't get any nutrition from it you don't get anything it's just good to look at but it can't produce anything right. praise the Lord so it's only an apron uh, talking about back to uh, what Adam was doing here and it only covers as I said before the front of you so you're you're still exposed you just think you know if I just keep the right angle going here all the time I can fake everybody out and they'll think that I'm exactly. clothed, right? Nice. Yeah. So you, you got to keep everything in front, yeah. praise the Lord. And, uh, and even then, it's only temporary because it's going to dry out. Anybody ever, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Halloween, I remember they, they had the, well, for example, we used to do a camouflage and we'd use real mm -hmm. stuff. Right. It's only good for about a week yeah. because then it dries out and it falls off the branch. And all you got is a bare branch, and you're you know, you're not hiding, you know. So th it's only this apron is temporary until it dries out and becomes brittle, and it falls off, leaving us naked and ashamed. Yeah. Now let's go back again to Genesis, only this uh, cha chapter three. Stay there, chapter three, but seventeen, uh, verse seventeen through twenty-one. Unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, and the dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So, uh, we know this, we've probably all heard it many times, but God covered them with animal skins. And that means, by definition, something had to die. Something had to be sacrificed. An innocent animal, its blood had to be shed in order for them to be adequately covered. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, I was thinking, you see the thorns and thistles. Remember I said, I was talking Sunday and I said that uh, the word uh, Sinai. Mm -hmm. Am I right here? means my thorns. Mm. So what Adam was, he was under the curse, the curse of the law, so to speak. Now, he wasn't under the law, but he was under a curse because of himself, because he had tried to take the place of the relationship with God through human effort, through human's design. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that mindset is just that if I can just get enough information 
about good and evil, I'll be able to make myself like God. God told the children of Israel, He said, this is what I, what, oh, we'll, we can do it all. Yeah. Whatever you demand, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So it's still this idea that I can become like God. I can make myself righteous and holy and Jesus. perfect, right. right? So they walked away from dependence on the Spirit of God to govern them mm -hmm. so that they could rule over themselves, govern themselves. The problem here, the only thing left for man now was a fig leaf or a fig tree covering. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus has cursed that. Now he says, if you simply have faith, you not only say to this fig tree, be cursed, but you can also say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it will be done. Yes. It's actually the removal of Mount Sinai. Yes. Come on. Woo. Praise the Lord. Because it's connected to that whole idea of works-based, man-made religion that tries to cover itself. Yes. Keep all the rules. Glory. Yes. Now here's what blew my mind. He says you can curse that mountain yeah. and tell it be cast into the sea. Look at Micah chapter 7, mm -hmm. verses 18 and 19. And you find the sea that Jesus is talking about. Micah 7, verses 18 and 19. Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Mm -hmm. He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. Mm -hmm. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths yes. of the sea. Praise the Lord. So what he's talking about is the sea of forgetfulness. Praise the Lord. He's talking about casting this, this religious, human, man-made way of trying to get things done and be spiritual and be holy. Amen. Cast out. Yes. Amen. Into a sea of forgetfulness where God doesn't deal with you on those terms whatsoever. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now, okay, so now look at Revelation chapter 8 and verse 8. And that's why I said, look, you can get, look, well, you can get crazy with this. Yeah. And I do. I mean, I do sometimes. I, I, and I think, well, that, that just can't be right. Yeah. It's too good. You know, it's just too good. But here's the, here's the deal. You see, if, if that's the case, then I won't be able to find any affirmation, confirmation, or uh, witness to that truth. Now, if it's the Lord, it'll show up everywhere in here. That's the way revelation works. So if you can't find a witness to some thing that you feel like the Lord has given you, let just back off and move on to something else. Yes. But if you can, yes. then just start looking because you'll find it. Every, it'll just start yes. leading you all over and through everything. And it's the Holy Spirit, man. It is what yes. will freak you out and make you feel like you are in contact yep. with the Lord. Yes. Uh, Praise the Lord. The thing comes alive is what I'm saying. Right. All right. So the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain. And again, this is what, see, you could just do a word study. You don't, you don't have to know all the Bible. Just do a word study and you'll be amazed at what God starts popping up before you. So, the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. This mountain burning with fire and it gets cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. Come on. All right, now compare that with Hebrews chapter 12, yeah. verses 18 through 22. Hebrews 12, 18 through 22. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. We're talking about Mount Sinai here where they got the law. Yep. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that, that heard entreated that the words should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Mm -hmm. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But you are come unto Mount Sion, yes. and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So maybe Revelation 8 
is dealing with the removing of this great mountain that burned with fire. Yes. Come on. Praise the Lord. It's the contrast between two covenants. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's what Jesus was talking about all the time. And we're seeing it. Just, it's just him preaching. It's Jesus trying to take people, yes. help them to make the transition from an old covenant yes. to the new covenant. He's trying to prepare them and he's trying to talk to them in a way that they can make the transition. But they don't get it most of the time because they're so locked into their man-made yes. way of doing things that he has to then, he does it in parables and then he'll go back and explain the parable. And even then they had problems with it. Right. Amen. Until after the resurrection. Why? Because they didn't have the spirit right. completely, fully as we have it today. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. So yes. he, look at verse 24 here. Just drop down to verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now remember in Revelation, the sea became blood. Yep. Right? Yep. When Jesus died and spilled his blood, now what I'm saying here, he didn't die for me, but he died as me. Yeah, that's right. Yes. You know, we always say, well, he died for me. He did. No, he died as me. Yes. As far as God was concerned, that was Nathan hanging on that cross. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it wasn't Jesus. I'm just saying there's a bigger picture here right. that he's trying to get us to understand. Yes. Look at Galatians chapter 2. Uh, verses 19 through 21. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. So, his death was my death. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And it's why... God remembers my sin no more. Yes. His death Lord. was my death. He, yes. sin, he didn't sin. Lord. Praise the Lord. God doesn't remember my sin because as far as God's concerned, I've already been crucified for it. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're new creatures in Christ. Right. Okay, so let's, we'll just wrap it up with this. Zechariah chapter 4. Verses 5 and 7. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace yes. unto it. Yes. You could speak to the mountain. Yes. Grace yes. is what you speak to the mountain. Yes. Hallelujah. Because the, cur the, because the fig tree has been cursed. Yes. The human way of doing this is over. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now the way we do it is by the Spirit. Yes. Grace, grace. In fact, you could go on and read, uh, I think it's verse 12 through 14. And now, instead of a fig tree, you've got an olive branch, two olive branches. And here's what's cool about the olive branches. They don't do anything but stand there. And the Spirit flows through them. He says, and I answered again and said unto him, What are these olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? The, the anointing flows through them. They don't do anything. They're just there. And he answered and he said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Yes. Yes. Now, you know who that is? That's me and Jesus. Come on. Seated with him 
in heavenly places at the right hand of God. Don't do anything. I just, all I got to do is be there and the anointing flows. Praise the Lord. Can you see why religion becomes so corrupt and so perverse? Because it's not the gospel. The gospel is the good news that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Anointed ones. Just resting in the Lord. Yes. Just standing by. Yes, and the anointing flows through us. Grace. Yes. Grace. Yes. Hallelujah. And mountains go in the sea. Yes. Praise the Lord. In the forgetfulness. God will not remember that religious behavior and action and expectation that we've had. He sees us anointed of God. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. With the power of God flowing through us without us doing anything other than just believing. Staying connected. Amen. Give the Lord a praise tonight. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we, that's the thing we have to keep foremost in our mind. Because the, you know the devil uses this more than anything else to trap us and to keep us from the supernatural that God wants us to experience. By making it about us instead of about him. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here tonight. You, Hope we'll see you Sunday and yes. Friday. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Woo.